Welcome to Electron Online and now let's try our hand on this example right here. Let's say we have two charges, one that is positively charged plus Q, and another one that is negatively charged minus Q over 2. So the magnitude of this charge is twice as much as the magnitude of this charge and they're opposite in sign. So let's say we draw a circle with the center right here. The circle has radius R and it passes through the line between Q and minus Q over 2. Notice that the circle passes a point where it's R over 2, which is half the radius of the circle away from minus Q over 2, and a full R, the full radius away from Q. That means there's another R over 2 from that location to the center of the circle. Now that means that this is twice as far away as this, which means that the potential of that location must be zero. Notice, twice the charge and twice as far away, half the charge, half the distance. That means that the positive charge, the potential there, will cancel out the negative potential from this negative charge right there. And that should make sense. So what we can look at here is that the potential total at this location right there is equal to, in this case, K times Q1, if we call this Q1, and this is, let's call this Q2, so that would be K Q1 over R1 plus K Q2 over R2, and in this case, Q1 would be a minus Q over 2, so it would be K times a minus Q over 2, divided by R1, which would be R over 2, is equal, to, oh, not equal to, I have a plus there, I'm getting a little too quick on the draw here, plus K times Q2, which is Q, divided by R2, which is R. Notice that this 2 counts out that 2, so we end up with minus KQ over R plus KQ over R, and that, of course, is 0, which indicates that location right there has 0 potential. Now, the claim is that anywhere along the circle has a 0 potential, which means that if we take a look at this distance from there to there, or uh, maybe what I'll do is it's easier to see when I do it like this. Let's draw this line right here, and let's draw this line right there. Let's call this line R1, let's call this line R2. Again, as long as R1 is half the size of R2 anywhere along the circle, then any point on the circle would still be zero potential, right? That's the condition here. Since I have half the charge here, which is negative, this has to be half the distance to any point on the circle compared to R2. So to prove that, that anywhere along the circle we have zero potential, we have to show that everywhere along the circle R1 is always half of R2. So to prove, we have to prove that R2 is equal to 2 times R1. That's probably a better way to write it. Okay, now how do we express R1 and R2 in terms of the circle? Well, if we put the circle on the origin right there, if we call this the y-axis, and we call this here the x-axis, then, and we know that the radius of the circle is r, we can then write the equation for the circle that says x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. All right, now, using the distance formula, I should be able to figure out the distance r1 and the distance r2. So this is any arbitrary point on the circle called x, y, and that would then be related in this fashion. So the relationship between x and y is determined by this equation right there. The location of that point right there on the x-axis, it would be uh, r over 2, and on the y-axis would be 0. And then that location at this point right there on the x-axis, you could say that that distance would be 2r, and the y would be 0. So the coordinates of that point is 2r and 0. Again. This is r, this is r, together that's 2r. All right, using the distance formula, I can now write r1 as equal to the square root of the x distance squared and the y distance squared. So the x distance squared for r1 would be the difference between this x and this x right there. So I can say that I have x minus r over 2 quantity squared, that would be the x distance between this point and that point on the circle. It doesn't matter if I go r over 2 minus x or x minus r over 2 because I'm squaring it anyway. And I add to that the quantity uh, in the y direction and so that would simply be uh, y, right? So that would simply be y squared, okay? And r2, 
the distance R2 would be equal to the square root of the x distance from there to there would be uh, uh, 2R minus x, the way I wrote that there, 2R minus x, and I have to square that, plus the y distance, which also would be y squared. Okay, and I can prove that this whole circle has zero potential if I show that R2 is equal to 2 times R1. So R2 must be equal to 2 times this. So what I can then say is that R2 equals 2 times R1, or this quantity right here, this, oh, R2, there we go. So the square root of the quantity 2R minus X quantity squared plus Y squared must equal 2 times R1, which is this quantity, which is the square root of the quantity X minus r over 2 squared plus y squared. Okay, if I can show that that's the case, then I've proven that anywhere along the circle we have zero potential. All right, what's next? Well, I think I want to square both sides. If I square both sides, end up with 2r minus x quantity squared plus y squared is equal to 4 times the quantity um, x minus r over 2 squared plus y squared. Okay, now I can go ahead and square things out. So this is a binomial. So this is going to be 4r squared. This times this times 2 would be minus 4rx plus x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 times. Here we get x squared. That would be x times that times 2. That would be minus xr over 2. That would be minus xr. And that would be uh, plus r squared over 4 plus y squared. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and multiply it through the 4x, uh, the 4 with everything else here. So I have 4r squared minus 4rx plus x squared plus y squared equals 4x squared minus 4xr plus r squared plus 4y squared. Okay, before I keep going now, is there anything I can cancel out? It's always nice if we can cancel something out. And no, it doesn't look like it. Hmm. But I can move everything over to one side and collect some common terms probably. Oh, one thing I can cancel out. I have a minus 4rx and a minus 4xr. That's the same thing, so they cancel out. Let's move all the x's to one side, all the y's to one side, and all the r's to the other side. All right, see what we get. 4r squared, move the other side. And I have an x squared here, 4x squared. So let's say we have x squared plus 4x squared plus y squared. Oh, wait a minute. If I move the 4x squared over here, that becomes a minus 4x squared. And time I cross equal sign, the sign changes. And here that would be minus 4y squared equals, we have already have an r squared there, move the 4r squared the other side, minus 4r squared. Okay, combining like terms, minus 3x squared minus 3y squared equals minus 4, oh, not minus 4, but minus 3 r squared. Notice I can uh, divide both sides of the equation by minus 3, which gives me x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If that is correct, then I've proven that anywhere along the circle, the potential is zero. And sure enough, the equation of the circle, right here, x squared plus y squared, matches my final result. And it came from the premise that r2 had to always be equal to 2, the two times r1 which indeed is the case because this checks with the equation I started with. So I've proven that anywhere along that circle, the potential is zero. And that would be then an equipotential circle. That's how we do that.